First and foremost, I'm never retired. I haven't said that, never will. Uh, I'm just having a long break. Left side, first shot's very easy. Knows that they're on wow. the right. Lovely shot and get right with the ace. Looking for it, he's got him hunted down. Time is up. Oh my God, Gary, are you gonna be kidding me? He gets the last kill in one second left. If I go back and meeting my 17-year-old Chris or Totte or whatever, I would say, you fucking did it, bro. And uh, shake his head and say, all the, the thoughts and dreams and all like hope you have for this game and this industry is like you're a part of it and you made it you made it become history. You're one of the stepping stone to actually make it even bigger than it like it was. How the industry was working, how the tournaments were working, and if there were even a stage or anything like that. And you were basically just playing for passion. And that's, that's the main goal when you're becoming an inspiring pro, if you ask me to just play for the passion and motivation for winning. And it's so interesting how much everything has changed. First time I heard Forrest's nickname, I was 15 years old. He was this player that stood out. He was the player that I looked up to. And having the chance to actually get invited to his team and play with him for such a long time, it's, I don't think a lot of people will actually have the chance to feel that and do that. It's a good start. Delpan is still there and he gets himself one get right with another one as well. Get right still hanging around as uh, Nasu actually has one HP, which is not good whatsoever. Nasu is the last man left alive here. Face will take him down and, and we will see SK being the champions here of the Intel Extreme Masters Global Challenge in New York. We did it together because we wanted to do this as big as we could and we did. And that's something that we had to, you know, give ourselves like a clap on our shoulder saying, great work and let's keep going forward because it's not done yet. I knew it's going to come out uh, as it's go before, so I had the chance actually to play it before anyone else. Let's get into the game. It is the USA versus Europe here. Okay. The first ever competitive Counter-Strike uh, Go game. My first thought about the game is like, yeah, this game is bad, but I see a future with it. and I see that it's going to be something. Looking good for the US. They've managed to push it onto this B-bomb site. Bomb will surely be planted here any moment. Now, there's another man coming up of close range. We saw there that the uh, Famas has been picked up by K-Sharp, but there's three, get right. four, get right, showing that he's an absolute beast. There's four for get right. I just had a huge belief in this game, and I think a lot of people look down on me because I'm this guy in 1.6, I'm the number one player or whatever it is, you know? They just thought it was a stupid mistake to move to the other game, but for me, this was about survival and having still CS go around in this industry. When we first created NRP, I remember that I handpicked out the players. I wanted to have Exist, I wanted to have Forest. Of course, I got a lot of help from the people behind in the beginning of like, we need Fifth Flyer because he's from Source, he needs to help you to understand the game, etc. like that. But I also wanted Freiburg and I remember it was, it was between him and another player. It was a mix of reaction for everyone. They were like, I don't care. Like, Whoever it is, it's gonna be like that. But I really believe that Freiburg is the player we needed and we, we wanted. And there's a reason why we went 87 0. And ninjas in pajama style as they mean to go on. They have not lost a single match in any Counter Strike Global Offensive at a major turn. They haven't even lost a single map. He's still alive inside behind. He's able to take out one. Big get two, picks up three. When you think of NIP, you think of finals every major. The NIP just seems like they're on a whole nother level. During that streak, there were so many times we were close to losing, actually. The teams we're playing, they wanted to beat us so badly, but someone would just like change the, the fate of the game in a second, or someone made a huge clutch and that just turned around the whole game and they just lost the game, you know? Because we were on a roll, we're still competing and we just keep going forward. 
it felt like we could never lose. I never actually paid too much attention to this streak. I don't think anyone of us didn't really pay too much attention to it. Till actually we lost. <laughs> Forest, can he get the kill? Angel with another one. Forest does get a headshot onto Kucha, but everything is riding on this. Flaren and Forest, they will both go down. Adrian and Dosia, they do it. 15 to 13. One more round for Versus Pro, and they will have won the first ever map against NIP on LAN. And it's all on through Flaren, he's got it. And he's just gonna be waiting to see if anyone is there and if he decides no one is, so now the bomb is gonna go down. Oh, but Adrian coming in from behind, get right with a kill. Adrian with another one, it's a double oh, kill for man, him. So Great turn of events. Adrian with a triple kill, it's all on exist. If he loses this one round and that's gonna be it. 16-14, they lose the first map versus Pro, the first team in history to beat NIP on land. They must be feeling happy if only we had a shot of the Kiev Arena at the moment. There's been a couple of times where I was so close to leaving, like really, really close to leaving. I had um, offers that it was like, oh shit, if that happened, oh my God, like you are playing with that person or that team, oh, you know, like it would be mind blowing in that time here, you know? I had this uh, thought process back in days where it's like, I give everything that I play for two years. And after two years, I either change teammates or I leave the organization, that team, and make a new team and then continue my ways. Because I felt you need to update yourself. But somewhere during the line, I just stayed. Something with NIP and the love that I had back then that kept me staying there. JW and Flusher, there is nothing they can do any longer. NIP have won Gamescom 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, 16-13. It finally happens. After nearly a year, after nearly a year, two second place finishes. Nip finally claimed the title. They are the champions. I don't have anything that really stands out to say, okay, yeah, it was the major winning moment or Dream Act Masters Malware, which is, of course, a big one for us Swedish people, or winning both back-to-back -back Oakland ones where both of the times we weren't even supposed to win it, you know? But everything around it, it's just like, whenever it went bad or good, you know, we were happy and, you know, like, trying to fix our issue and just going forward all the time. There was no, like, bigger issue that could break this in completely like one second. No, there was a group of fans that wanted to do this and live the dream and just having a good one. You know? Now there's glories. Now there's a legendary status to the name and it's like, it is something that no one can touch, you know, and like change about it. And I'm just so happy that I got fortunate enough to do it for such a long time. I, I played, <laughs> thank you, uh, I played this game for 20 years, uh, lived and breathed this game for so, such a long time, it means the world to me to just be standing here, I, I can't really get out the words that I'm feeling right now, but I'm just super happy to be here still, I, did, I didn't know this would be so painful for me, but I'm just very happy that still people are supporting me, supporting and appealing. And, uh, the burden and the, the rocks that I will be carrying with my backpack, the invisible one, just released directly on the spot. It's just going to be that break where it's, in my opinion, probably just going to be ending into a retirement but without me saying the words. I think everyone can say that I did it, but I can't say it, like, personally, it's a, it's a personal thing, like, I can never say those words. Of course, I miss it. Of course, I want to compete. I miss all the things for it. But if I would do it again, I need to have a higher reason for it than just being, I just want to get back into it. It must be also on my own terms and, like, all the things. And there's probably a higher risk that I probably wouldn't be there as a human being if I continue again because I'll do anything to be the best and that means sacrificing my health even my legacy in that team like I will sacrifice anything I'll drop everything for it but you have to think about your health and 
it took me too long to actually realize I need to take care of myself. How are you guys doing? It's been a while. Again. I see streaming as a, another competition. I love it more than people may think because I could decide myself instead of being dependent on someone else or organization or someone like, like step up or something. And I think that shows in when I'm like becoming into my streaming mode, which happens pretty often, I put in 12, 14 hours. I don't care, like I put in the hours and I restarted the day after again, you know, and I keep going forward, keep going forward. And I enjoy it because I'm still connected to your community in a different way. And they're like, hi, old timer, what's up? Like, what are you up to? And so I'm like, and it's nice to be Chris instead of Get Red as well. Because that's when I wanted to do where it's like, I want to see, I want to make sure that everyone got to know me in a different level than just Get Red. I've been enjoying it so far and I think I'm going to do that for quite a while. <laughs>